Okay, so we're going to talk about evil BIM and how to get around evil BIM. We all know that BIM is used for an incredible amount of things. So many things that I am not going to describe them now, uh, but hopefully you are aware of some of these. But what BIM do we need? What you see on the left is a BIM, what you see on the right is a BIM. But if we produce one when we need the other, we're going to have waste, we're going to have either over or under production, and we can have risk and problems in our process. So, <laughs> ben, ben Stiller was a, uh, Derek Zoolander, I should say, uh, was an owner that didn't really get what he wanted. And we call this evil BIM. So what do we need? What do we need for every single project in order to get the right BIM? I will hear you shout, some kind of plan. Whether we call it an execution plan or something else, we need a plan. But where is that BIM execution plan? Those people on projects at the moment, you probably know where it is. It's here, yeah? We keep it either in the bottom drawer, it gathers cobwebs, and we only pull it out when we are in trouble, yeah? when there's a litigation issue, a challenge, a problem. So why is this difficult? Why do we have problems planning? Well, I would say one thing is, it's not really that much fun. It's much cooler to talk about algorithms and um, you know, generative design. It's less cool to talk about standards. And when we do talk about standards, we have many of them. So somebody new to this, you're gonna look at that and say, hmm, well, where do I start? There's some fantastic standards out there, but there are quite a few. On the technology side of things, we've got these great software companies creating fantastic tools. And much like any other industry, there are buckets. So you would expect planning tools, authoring, analysis, and use tools. But this is where we focus all of our tools. Not an exhaustive list, and there's more and more every day. What do we do for planning? We use the traditional tools for planning. So true. And not only are they not dedicated for BIM, they're also completely disconnected from each other and the rest of the workflow. So we're not doing ourselves a favor. So that's number two. The third one is that we have tried to have this concept of level of detail, level of development, level of definition, level of design, whatever you want to call it, in whichever place you are in. But it's a big scale. And so when you actually come to implement something that's supposed to save our bacon, it's pretty difficult because one fixed number is supposed to be telling us about many, many aspects so that we can plan better BIM. There's also, fourth, is administration. So we're using these disconnected tools, we have to share files, we have to go through that workflow. It's a very, very big challenge and it's a burden. So we end up copying and pasting. Yeah, this is gonna save us time. It's gonna put us in right the perfect position. But we know that copying and pasting, again, is gonna cause us a lot of risk. We also have the issue where these are not collaborative. So we are having one person, the BIM guy, you know, this BIM manager, in a corner of the room, creating this document that's supposedly gonna save us, you know, our risk on this project. And what happens is these approaches result in misunderstanding, so people calling things different, um, this guy thinks it's a six, the other guy thinks it's a nine. And then what we call BIM blame. So the finger pointing happens and BIM gets the blame. And BIM was going to save us time and money, but it ended up, up costing us more, creating a lot more problems, and wouldn't it be a better world if we didn't have it? Well, everyone knows that it's going to change the world in, in what, what do we all say? Five years, yeah? The standard five-year period. Yeah? You just wait. If you're not doing BIM in five years, you'll be out of business. Yeah? Standard approach. So BIM blame. So how do we get rid of all of this? We said, what if? What if we could produce something that would tackle all of those problems? What if we could simplify that process, put it into one tool, integrate it into the rest of the workflow, actually make a, a, a standard process valuable, make it lean, and we can't get with this concept. We love the, the tag there, Smart Lean BIM. And the Smart Lean BIM de definition is the right BIM at the right time by the right people for the right reasons. And for the right reasons is really critical because you could have an owner that says, I want some BIM on my project. You could provide way too much BIM and have an unhappy owner. So let's be able to provide it for the right reasons. So live BIM execution plans, visual BIM scopes, a simple workflow is what we've attacked. And, well, that's a fancy transition. 
and, <laughs> and being able to use a very simple, compelling tool to be able to get there. My name's Clive. Thank you, Karen. <laughs>